Every month we hear about record breaking GST collections. In April fiscal year 25, the goods and services tax collection hit an all time high of 2.1 trillion rupees. It's a huge milestone because it's the first time ever that GST collections have crossed the 2 trillion rupees mark since the tax system was introduced 7 years ago. This signals that our economy is growing strong. The high GST collections show that our economy is being more formalized and businesses are getting organized and moving into the mainstream. Coming to some new developments. The GST Council, which is chaired by a finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman, just had its first meeting since the new government took office. During this meeting, they rolled out a bunch of changes aimed at making compliance easier for everyone involved. Now, you might be wondering why do we have a GST Council in the first place? Well, it's all about Article 279. This article gives the council the authority to make recommendations to both the union and the states on crucial GST related issues. They decide on things like which goods and services should be taxed or exempted from GST and they set the model GST laws. Plus, they handle the GST rate slabs, tweaking them as and when needed for different product categories. Alright, let's dive into the recent changes announced at the latest GST Council meeting. The council chaired by Finance Minister Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman has introduced several measures to make life easier for businesses and to streamline the GST processes. First up, the council has proposed some significant ease of doing business measures. They are recommending changes to the law that will allow for a conditional waiver of interest or penalties on certain tax demands for the fiscal years 2018, 2019 and 2020. This is fantastic news for businesses because it means they can get some relief from past tax issues making it easier to stay compliant moving forward. However, this is only applicable for cases if you pay the full amount of tax mentioned in the notice up to March 31st, 2025. So this waiver isn't for everyone. It doesn't apply to willful defaulters. So if you're genuinely trying to clear up past tax issues and you make the full payment up to 31st March 2025, you won't have to worry about the extra burden of interest or penalties. In a move that affects millions of people, services provided by the Indian railways like platform tickets, waiting room facilities and battery operated car services will no longer be subject to GST. So next time your rental railway station, you won't have to worry about paying extra GST for these services. To crack down on fraud and streamline the registration process, the council has decided to make Aadhaar based biometric authentication mandatory for all GST registrations. This step is aimed at preventing fraudulent claims for input tax credit, which has been a big issue. Another change is the exemption of GST for hostel accommodations outside educational institutions up to 20,000 per person per month. This is great news for students and people staying in hostels as it reduces their lodging costs. Currently, there's a 5% GST on fertilizers while raw materials like sulfuric acid and ammonia are taxed at 18%. The industry has been pushing for this particular change and the council has responded by recommending an exemption for the fertilizer sector from the current 5% GST. At first glance, you'd think this would be great news for the fertilizer companies, right? It should lower costs and potentially boost profits. But here's the twist. Right after the GST council announced this proposal, fertilizer stocks actually dropped. Why? Well, it turns out the stocks had already seen a boost from the earlier reports suggesting the removal of GST on fertilizers. When the official proposal came out, it didn't meet the perhaps overly optimistic expectations of the market, leading to a bit of a sell-off. It's a classic case of buy the rumor, sell the news. Lastly, the council proposed a uniform 12% GST on all milk cans, whether they are made of steel, iron or aluminum. When an overseas parent company grants employee stock of ownership plans to employees of its Indian subsidiary, it usually sends the cost over to the Indian company. Previously, the income tax department saw this cross charge as an import of services, which meant they demanded an 18% GST on it. This is a hefty extra cost for companies. But there's good news from the GST Council's latest meeting. They've clarified that the GST won't apply to these cross charges as long as they're purely on a cost to cost basis. So if the parent company is just passing on the actual cost without adding any extra fees, there's no GST to worry about. However, if the overseas parent adds any extra fees or commissions, then those additional charges will be subject to GST. Now, if you look at it, there was a lot of buzz and anticipation about some big changes that people were hoping for. 
Specifically, online gaming companies and online casinos were expecting a revision of the sin tax of 28% GST rate that applies to their industry. There was also a lot of talk about the possibility of bringing petrol and diesel under the GST regime which could potentially simplify and reduce taxes on these essential fuels. However, none of these topics were addressed in this meeting. So it looks like the current GST rates for online gambling and the separate tax structure for petrol and diesel will stay as they are for now. Now, the next big event to keep an eye on is the union budget which is scheduled for sometime in July. We'll see you then. Having said that, this is me, Ralston, signing off. Have a great day and stay safe. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.